Aloha and welcome to this week's edition of Business in Hawaii. I'm Daylan Yanagita and we are broadcasting live from the Think Tech studios in downtown Honolulu. If you want to tune in live, we are at www.thinktechhawaii.com. And while there, please subscribe to our programs and get on our mailing list. The theme of Business in Hawaii is to share with you stories of local businesses by local people. And our guests share with us their journey to building successful businesses right here at home. In the Think Tech studio today is Nathan Whitaker. Nathan is the Business Development Manager of Pacific Business and Accounting Services. Nathan, thank you so much for joining me today. I am so excited to have you here. Thank you for the opportunity. It's, it, it, I'm looking forward to it. Well, it's funny because we go way back and I've known you in different roles. <laughs> and so it's interesting for me to be able to ask you about the journey and, and where you've been. So, of course, I'd like to ask you, where did you grow up? Where? Well, you know, it's one of those things where I'm a Hapa Katunk from, from Kansas. I'm Hapa. Uh, I, I'm half Japanese. I grew up in Kansas. Met a local girl uh, here 17 years ago, and the, and the rest is history. Uh, and, uh, and Hawaii will forever be my home. Um, I know. I've, I've known you from your past, your past life. Um, and I, I've always viewed you as, uh, he's, he's right here. He's homegrown. So right. it's so nice to be able to reconnect with you. But this time, I'm talking about PABS, your, your, your new adventure. So tell us a little bit about um, Pacific Business and Accounting Services. Yeah. So Pacific uh, Accounting and Business Services, we are a, a local company uh, that, that helps small companies to outsource their bookkeeping. So many companies, not-for-profits, um, franchises, just, uh, you know, all the small organizations out there have a hard time with their bookkeeping. They don't know how their business is doing, how to plan for the future. They don't, they really don't know where, how their finances are in, uh, are in order or not. So that's what we help them to do is just to basically take that off their hands, let them focus on their, on their businesses and, and, you know, help them grow. So I know that um, Pacific, I'm just going to call you PABS. <laughs> Make it easier on yourself. I know I say that I do the same thing. I know that PABS, while you started here in Hawaii, has a parent company. And tell me a little bit about how your, your business was developed and, and then grew. Yes. Um, so PABS was a part of another uh, uh, well-known organization uh, from ProService called uh, Pro Accounting. Um, then uh, we, uh, PABS, purchased um, the, uh, the line of business, more or less, from ProService in 2012. Uh, so we've been we've grown exponentially um, since since then. So uh, we were doing working with about forty clients. Now we've got about one hundred and fifty clients here uh, in Hawaii, uh, all throughout all of the islands, uh, and then we've got uh, business in uh, the mainland as well too. So I assume that quite a few of your clients have have been accustomed to um, the services that PABS offers since they came from um, Pro Accounting and and now. Just a fluid transition? Yeah, you know, I think that that's a part of the business here in Hawaii that we're seeing kind of the progression, right? Before any of these other kind of outsourcing, it was something foreign for, for local people, or local organizations to basically, they, they held everything tight, uh, you know, close to, close to the chest regarding their organizations, right? But now, as, as we all know, it's so difficult to run a business here in Hawaii. So you've got to do what, you've, what you can do to make yourself more profitable, be able to focus on your business, and uh, get all the help you can get. As a manager of a business here, tell me about what you find difficult about, about operating a business in Hawaii or what your clients tell you is difficult about running a business in Hawaii? Well, I think we all know, you know, about the taxes and the, the cost of health insurance. You know, all of those things that basically kind of put a, so many small businesses behind the eight ball. We try to kind of ease some of those, you know, address some of those concerns for them. Um, the, the, the whole part of, of, of businesses here is, is just really, you, you've got you to gotta help each other out, right? And knowing other businesses to help kind of grow your business. We, Hawaii is one of those places, right? You know, it's not what you know, it's who you know, right? And so, you know, what we do is we kind of use those relationships to work with all kinds of businesses. Fantastic. 
Tell me a little bit about the type of business that would seek PABs out. Are they small businesses, larger businesses, maybe both? Yeah, and we have we have all we have uh, all sizes of organization. I have a, a soft spot for uh, for not for profits. I've done a lot of help for not for profits over the years, and that's where I like to really focus on not for profits and small to medium businesses, right? Because those small uh, companies they don't need they don't need a full time bookkeeper, right? And then by let's say it's a restaurant. The, the people, they're working at the restaurant 12, 14 hours a day. Last thing that they want to do at the end of the, end of the night is to go and do all of, you know, do all of the, uh, the bookkeeping. So that's where we can help them. Same thing with, uh, with a uh, not-for-profit. They, you know, they've, they've got that little bit of funding, and they need to be mindful about that. So our internal controls to, helps to avoid any situations where, you know, Sometimes uh, people that, that they don't know could you know, take some of that money. So we help them. We do all the bookkeeping for them and, and at, a, uh, at an affordable price. So what is the smallest client you have and what is the largest? How do um, you measure that? I, we've got one not-for-profit that has one gentleman, right? So we can we, we can do that. He, he has a, 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 a farm-to-table um, not-for-profit in Wailua. And it's just him. And it's just him. So, of course, he's been on the farm all day long. He doesn't want to be doing his accounting. And then we've got some large, some really large organizations for in Hawaii as well that have you know a couple hundred of people, you know that that sort of thing. So it really, it really, really depends. So, for a business a person who doesn't exactly know what they don't know, right? And I think that that's probably my problem. I don't know what I don't know. And what types of services do people come to PABS for specifically? So I'm a business owner. Say I, um, I put out a, a service, and that's what I do. There's an exchange of money and, and whatnot. Where does PABS come in? So where, where we can help you out. Let's, let's maybe if we could uh, use a, a restaurant for it. For an example, right? So then that way we can t- so they have all the receipts where they're buying goods from, you know, the from the grocery stores, from Costco, from all of these places, and they've got these receipts, right? Then they've got, um, then they they are are you know using all of their funds, right? So we take all of those receipts from all those organizations. We kind of upload those uh, those documents, put them into their accounting software of their choice, whatever that they're normally using, and just process all of their bookkeeping for the month, and then make sure that they have a monthly financials uh, on time every month, uh, like clockwork on the fifteenth uh, on the fifteenth of the following month. Um, if a small organization. If they don't have those numbers, it's hard for them to grow. It's hard for them to really realize, hey, how to plan for the for the, uh, the coming years, coming months. Do you educate the business owner as to what they need or what they should be looking at? I think a lot of business owners may not be familiar. Say a little mom and pops um, may not be familiar with what they need to look at or what they should analyze. Does PABS also do some of that oh, consulting type? Yeah, most definitely, most definitely. And then we kind of help them, um, let's say, if they aren't very familiar with QuickBooks. A lot of our clients are on QuickBooks. We help to kind of train them to make sure that they're categorizing their expenses, making sure that everything's documented properly. We help them. Part of our our, um, our monthly program is to uh, pay their GE taxes if, if, that's, uh, you know, if that's something that they want. That's included for free in our in our um, in our program. So, if for a lot of uh, newer businesses, they don't always know how the GE taxes uh, work, and so then that's part of it that we kind of help guide them through the process. Uh, we take care of the 1099s for them if if that's something that they need help with as well. What about payroll? Yeah, we don't do anything with payroll. We don't. We we do the the closest that we come with helping uh, organizations with payroll is the data entry of more or less like taking that from their timesheets, m- putting data entry into QuickBooks as far as uh, the expenditures and the hours. 
And then, um, th then it's returned to the business owner in the form of a report, so they can then process. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And so we, it actually, it more or less kind of gets them all set up, right? So then that way they, uh, I mentioned earlier about the internal controls. That way they can really realize, hey, where is my money going? All where is my money going out to? Making sure that there's not going someplace that they don't want it to. And from the, uh, from the, uh, the desktop function, um, the, they can just easily click and get the payments paid. What about an organization? I, my, my guess is that this is all done through um, some sort of um, technology platform. Um, but what about the business owner that actually doesn't use technology? I will say that'd be kind of difficult for us because uh, you know the majority of our work is all done through the via the cloud. So you know we've got uh, a, a large grocery store, a third generation grocery store on the on the west side that we help with, and so they're getting in receipts and receipts and receipts invoices every day from all of their vendors that are bringing in the groceries into into the store. If they didn't have, uh, you know, somebody that, that could help us to be able to scan that, to put that into a, a Dropbox, then we wouldn't be able to receive those, to receive all of that information. Um, that's, they were able to take over a, another location in Molokai, and uh, if it wasn't because of our system and the way we've got it already organized for them, made it, made it a smooth transition for them. In terms of the technology needed to get started, what do you what would you say is the minimum? What if I'm just not tech savvy? What's the minimum that I would need in order to to partake in in your services? I would say just being able to kind of uh, take a picture or scan documents. So most people, even my mom, has no really computer skills other than being able to uh, play her games or, or maybe take a picture on her on her camera, but. All she, all she would have to do, all the client would have to do is more or less like take a picture or scan the invoices and we could kind of more or less uh, email it and take it to there. So as long as they've got email, I, I, I think we could probably help them out. Your mom and my mom must hang out together. Right, exactly. <laughs> um, when we come back, I want to talk more about the types of things that PABS does um, and, and how that can roll into something much larger because what, I, what I'm hearing from you is that this is almost an educational experience for a business owner and de developing different ways to analyze their business. And I right. think that's really exciting um, for businesses and entrepreneurs. We're going to take that short break. This is Business in Hawaii. We'll see you back here shortly. Aloha. I'm Keisha King, host of At the Crossroads, where we have conversations that are real and relevant. We have spoken with community leaders from right here locally in Hawaii and all around the world. Won't you join us on thinktechhawaii.com or on YouTube on the Think Tech Hawaii channel. Our conversations are real, relevant, and lots of fun. I'll see you at the crossroads. Aloha. Aloha. My name is Mark Schlav. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. My program airs every other Monday at 1 o'clock on Think Tech Hawaii. Most of my programs deal with my own life and law experience. Recently, I interviewed Alex Jempel, who I have known for over 30 years, about his voyage across the sea as a lawyer from Tokyo to Hawaii. Those are the type of stories that I like to bring and like to talk about human stories about law and life. Aloha. Welcome back. This is Business in Hawaii, and with us today is Nathan Whitaker of Pacific Business and Accounting Services. Hey, Nathan. Before we get back into what we were talking about, how you help businesses, um, tell me about your passion, how you, how you got here. I, I know you as Nathan Whitaker from Robert Half, um, but t tell us a little bit about your passion and, and why you love this space. Yeah, I, I think this is a great opportunity. You know, we, we talked about earlier about how difficult it is to, to make your business work. You see that, unfortunately, how many businesses close up shop. I felt that this was an opportunity to be able to help the community, help, help organizations grow, become more profitable, 
and just be able to help kind of generations, generations uh, uh, in the future, you know. Um, being able to help those companies, taking a little bit off of their, off of their plate. We are all so busy as, a, as parents, as business people, we're, we're, we're maxed out, right? So if PABS can help organizations just taking away that little bit of that, that bookkeeping from them, take a little bit of that stress and pulling out their hair, oh, did I file my GE taxes? How do I do this 1099s? Where are my financials? If we can take that little piece of the puzzle, that little piece of stress away from them, so then that way they can go um, enjoy their kids' baseball team, uh, baseball games, uh, softball games, volleyball games, you know, paddling. That's 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 what I feel passionate about about being able to help those companies. And now it makes complete sense to me because you've always in in any in any um, space that you've been in, you've always connected your passion with your work. Um, and I've always, I've always seen, it, whether it's giving back to the community or of course helping others, um, now, I, now I see how it aligns with your passion. So yeah. thanks for sharing that. Um, when we left to break, we were talking about perhaps the business owner who's just starting out and um, needs some help from, from, from step one. Can they come to you and say, hey, Nathan, I Got a GE license for twenty five bucks. Now what? Right. Yeah, absolutely. We, you know, they can come over to us, and and, and I want to just kind of help them. Uh, you know, kind of map it out. Try to help them out from the get go. So oftentimes, I hear these com these companies that I meet. You know, Nate, I didn't have anything set in place. It's been two years. My books are a mess. I don't know where I can find all this information. I am growing. I want to get a, a, a loan, a commercial loan. They said, where's your books? I just kind of pointed at the box of receipts. I need help. So we can help both of those types of, both of, those types of clients, whether it is the, the starting out, just to kind of get you set up from, from the get-go correctly, Right, or one of those clients that needs some help uh, doing some of those reconciliations, making sure that they, they get their books in order, we can help out both ways. I love that story, uh, the, the business owner that, that opens up his box of receipts and says, oh, okay, now yeah. I, I need some, some bookkeeping. Right. right, right. So you've actually had situations where Oh my gosh! Yes, all the time, all the time. Where I'm talking to companies. Oh, I, you know, I haven't filed taxes. I haven't done this. I haven't done that. Like, okay, well then let's let's kind of break it down step by step. Now, you know, we don't file taxes for. We're not a CPA, um, but what we do is more or less kind of help the companies to get their book bookkeeping, their general ledgers in, in order. So then, at the end of the year, when they hand off all of their monthly financials to their CPA, they're actually spending less money on their CPA because everything's in order. That CPA is not having to go out and, and dig in through that shoebox. Ah, okay, very good. So it sounds like though with, of course, the clientele that you have, the number of clients that you have, um, it sounds like you need a lot of bodies to make that all happen. Huh? Many people at PABS. Yeah, we've we've got quite a few. We've got quite a few. Yeah, so most definitely. And so that's one of the things that you know, with with a lot of CPAs, a lot of bookkeepers, that they kind of max. You know, they have a max capacity. Um, you know, our team. Uh, we, we've got over two hundred people on our on our team, so we can definitely um, help them to uh, to get their books in order and kind of help them out for the future. I think another great thing that you had said was that you you can work with whatever software that someone is using. I think most commonly in small businesses, QuickBooks. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about the integration and how that all works. Oh yeah, and, and that's one of the things is that some of the companies, let's say a construction company per, per chance, they've got all of these different projects. Um, some softwares they don't, it doesn't have the capability to be able to match. Every single, uh, every single project and making sure that everything is keeping separate. Um, we use a, a product called um, Sage Intact that really helps a lot of the not-for-profits uh, that maybe they've gotten a grant 
to help help the homeless, maybe to help the blind. So then that way they can charge to each category or each project, each grant. Same thing in, in turn for a construction company, for each project, each building, each house, to make sure they're keeping everything separate. Then at the end of the month, give them an overall general ledger for everything as well too. I think if you talk to um, a lot of folks who are entrepreneurs, they may not know that there's an opportunity to outsource those functions, yes. or they may not even know that they need right. bookkeeping, but yeah. um, they may not know that the outsourcing opportunity is, is available. And since you're in that space, I want to ask you what your feelings or your thoughts are um, about the temperature in Hawaii for outsourcing business services. Um, I, I know that there are companies out there that um, outsource um, recruiting or out, outsource payroll and and now we're talking about an outsource of business and accounting services what are your thoughts about the Hawaii business climate and where, where that's going? what I like to use it as an example of if you're getting married right uh, your your aunt has a camera right and she can take all the pictures that that that, uh, that, that she wants or you may want right but wouldn't you rather have a professional, hire a professional to do that? Outsource a professional to take care of, uh, take care of your special day. That's more or less what an outsourcing organization can do for any company. Taking part of one aspect of, the, of that wedding or of that business, because that business is more or less like their baby, that's their special day, and you don't want somebody to, that isn't a professional to go in and ruin it. So that's what that that's probably the easiest explanation that I, that I could probably give regarding outsourcing. Do you think that businesses in Hawaii are open to that? I, I know that once upon a time, this is my business. I I want to control it. You even said that, hey, you know, I don't want anyone to look at under the hood. This is right. this is my business. Yeah, and, and and I think with with technology, we all know why. Maybe a little bit slow when it comes to making changes, but I think that as the unemployment has 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 dropped so significantly, you know, the unemployment for accounting people is less than one percent here on Oahu right now. So, finding those good accounting people, those good bookkeepers, is rather difficult and rather expensive. So then that's where we can come in help a company get their books in order and actually save them money because they don't have to buy that person the computer. We don't have to uh, uh, rent a bigger building space. Um, you know, we don't have to pay benefits for another person. We can kind of outsource that one aspect of the company and they can concentrate on their business. That sounds pretty fantastic. So tell me what that's going to cost me. Yeah, and it's, and it's very simple. So what we do is we actually talk to the business owner and get two months of their general ledger, uh, or if they have it, right? Uh, of the shoebox. Uh, right, right, <laughs> of their shoebox, right? Or their bank statements, just to kind of see how much, how many transactions um, that they're having on a monthly basis. And so then that's how, that's how we kind of figure out what the monthly cost uh, would be. Yeah, and I definitely even, think it's a lot more affordable than people than what what people might think. Um, you know, if if I'm a business owner and you know, I, I don't know if I I want someone to look in my shoebox. Your industry must be built on a lot of trust. Right. Um. Tell tell me about the relationships that you have with your clients, and then tell me about security. So, um, once you open my shoebox and you right. you put that all into um your software system, how secure is my information and, and what, what, what measures are you taking to protect my information? Yeah, and, and that's, that's, you know, the, uh, the whole data thing, um, identity theft, that's a, huge, that's a huge issue that everybody's kind of talking about. And we, we've never had any issues uh, with that. We're actually are held, or held to a higher standard of that data security. Um, you know, nobody can have their cell phones in, in the room when they're working. Uh, nobody can have any kind of flash drives just to make sure there's no information that, be, that can be, uh, that can be um, uh, reached by the, by the employees. So if I become a client, do I have a relationship with um, one, one point of contact so that now I feel like, hey, Nathan, remember that receipt that I got? Can we put that somewhere else? Or? Yeah, what we actually do is we actually assign you a team. Because, you know, let's say that you a have, you have um, uh, 
Jill's bookkeeping company, right? You know, for example, if Jill's out sick or Jill goes on vacation, everything, all of her clients get put on hold. If she goes to that that that, uh, that two week Alaska cruise, right? You know, everything's put on hold. So with us, because you're assigned a whole team, it just it, you you don't even know. So you've got more or less you've got a couple of people that you talk to on a regular basis to make sure that everything uh, keeps going. The other thing I love about tabs and the business that you do is that you also offer opportunities to educate people. Um, and I know that you have an event coming up um, soon, and I'd love for you to share with your viewers um, about that event and what they can expect. Yeah. Well, we definitely love uh, for everybody to come down to the Plaza Club uh, next Thursday, the uh, 14th from 8.30 to 10.30. Uh, we have a networking event. It's a great opportunity for business owners uh, and, and people to come down, talk about their, um, uh, their organization, meet new people. Um, it's tremendous. We've had two events, and we've also had uh, such great feedback from people that have all, that come to the events actually doing business with people that they met just at that event. So come on down. Come and on also down. To, to, to meet PABS and learn more right. about what the services that, that you all provide. Yeah, and so we do like a five-minute presentation on, on regarding PABS, um, and then we have a couple of our clients to come in and speak about their organizations uh, for five minutes and then their relationships uh, with PABS. Um, and then that alone with a great breakfast, uh, you can't beat it. You said food. I'll right? be there. <laughs> exactly. Bacon. That's all, that, that's Bacon. A, that, Bacon. That's, that's all you need to hear. Um, I'd also like uh, for people to know how to find you. I mean, if most people know where to find you, but right. tell your viewers how to, how to get in touch with you if they have any questions. Yeah, so it's uh, www.pacificabs.com. And um, you can definitely um, reach me at nathan.whitaker uh, at pacificabs.com. That's fantastic. Where are your office located? Uh, over here on Richard Street. Fantastic. You are close by. Right. Well, Nathan, I am so thankful that you spent time with me today, and I'm glad that we got to catch up. Um, anything, any last parting words that you'd no. like to, to leave? No. Uh, well, first off, I just want to say thank you. This is, this is great. Uh, I thought it was going to be worse than, than it was, uh, being next to you, the pro. The, the pro uh, <laughs> so I appreciate the opportunity. Um, this is my little tagline that I like to say for, for, for PABS. Leave your books to us. We'll take care of the fuss. Fantastic. Unfortunately, we are out of time, but I wanted to thank Nathan and the amazing production staff here in the studio. If you would like to be a guest on the, on the show, please like us and subscribe and leave a comment at the bottom. Business in Hawaii airs every Thursday at 2 p.m. and we look forward to seeing you here next week.